What's going on guys, JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City transfer video. We're still going to be rolling out transfer updates, we've still got plenty to talk about so make sure like always if you are enjoying that content then make sure you subscribe, press that red button, press the bell and put your push notifications on. Still on that big push towards 14,000 subscribers, we're now less than 300 subscribers away so any help towards that would be much appreciated. Don't forget also social media links in the description below and sliding across at the bottom of the screen. If you want to go and follow me on my Twitter and Instagram, email also in the description below too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships for any videos or any general business inquiries don't forget also leave a thumbs up if you enjoy this video and also leave your thoughts in the comments below because i'm always interested in what you do have to say and so without further ado we're going to be reviewing manchester city's summer 2020 transfer window giving some of my thoughts with all the deals and whether i think they're good deals or bad deals and why. So we're going to start off with the outsource like we have done throughout much of this summer 2020 transfer window and we're going to start off with Leroy Sane. He of course departed Manchester City to go and join Bayern Munich, his contract expiring at the end of next summer. Manchester City kind of forced into a corner here and forced to accept Bayern Munich's offer which to be fair to City, managed to get a little bit more money than what I was expecting. There was a little bit of a standoff that went off for a couple of weeks, but Bayern Munich eventually did pay up, and the deal I think is worth nearly uh, or over now 50 million euros, which I think is a good amount for a player that's got less than one year left on his contract. Ideally, you'd be looking for a lot more for a quality player like Leroy Sane, considering he's had a serious injury though, uh, and he has picked up niggling injuries now for Bayern Munich. I think City's managed, in my opinion, to accumulate a an all right amount, and so this transfer doesn't surprise me. Um, I think City's managed to get uh, more money than what I was certainly expecting, so I don't think this is, in my opinion anyway, uh, a bad deal for the situation that we was in. Now, Angelino though, uh, he headed out on loan to RB Leipzig once more, of course joined them in January of 2020 for a season-long loan, and then he's gone and joined uh, RB Leipzig again on a season-long loan this time for the whole of the season rather than just uh, half of it or there or thereabouts. Now, the problem I have with this transfer is not so much that he's headed out on loan, it's more how the obligation to buy is working. Now, the fee, obviously, I'd be looking for it to be a little bit higher for Angelina, so I think we're looking at around 20 million euros um, for the whole deal and what it's worth. We've got a couple of million euros um, in the initial loan deal. I think uh, they've got a, buy back, a buying uh, obligation to buy, sorry, uh, for 18 million euros. A quality player like Angelino, I'd have been looking for more. I'd have ideally liked him to have left permanently. If he wasn't going to leave permanently, he was going to be on loan. There'd be an obligation to buy, not with clauses. He's got to play 12 games this season, five of which have got to come after, uh, in the second half of the season. So if, uh, if RB Leipzig are being cheap, then they just won't play Angelino and then they don't have to sign him and therefore wasting a loan. And I don't know what the finances are at RB Leipzig, but they couldn't afford to sign Angelino for €23 million Euros, um, this summer to sign him permanently. So are they going to be able to be in a situation where they can next summer? I mean, they've had player sales this summer to accumulate money. I'd have thought they'd have had the money there to have, to have bought Angelino. And I do feel like City could have sold Angelino to another club and got a little bit more money. But um, yeah, it's... I think this is a bad deal for Manchester City, but that uh, is just my opinion. Now, Tosin Adara Bayo, uh, he left on transfer deadline day, has joined Fulham for £2 million. And I'm just going to watch my transfer update for the transfer deadline day special where I speak about um, and uh, where I speak about Adara Bayo, because this is this is just a bad deal in my opinion. £2 million for a quality young homegrown English football player. I think he's 24 years old. Had a great loan season last season at Blackburn Rovers. Two million pound? Come on. No, not for me. I think uh, uh, if, if we hadn't left it so late, I feel like we could have got above five million. We could have got six to eight million pounds uh, for for, uh, for Adara Bayo. I mean, we've not got a buyback clause in there. Um, it's it's uh, our policies with players leaving, in my opinion isn't fantastic and uh, this Adara Bayo situation sums up Manchester City's strategy when selling players um, it's just not good that's my opinion now Otamendi he leaves uh, he's left to uh, go and join Benfica in Portugal 
I think that's a decent move for Otamendi. If he's getting playing time and he can uh, hit the ground running and settle in, just like he did when he played for FC Porto in Portugal, then I think Benfica's got themselves a decent player. They've obviously got a lot of money that they've uh, managed to uh, get from uh, Ruben Diaz coming a Manchester City player. Uh, but I think this is a good move for Otamendi. I think City's done well here for Otamendi to leave uh, and, and bring in a, a good player like Ruben Diaz. So I think... Um, I feel like City are a happier team right now with that deal rather than Benfica. So, yeah, uh, it's just one of those that, that's had to happen for another deal uh, to happen. And so Otamendi, I have full respect for Otamendi, by the way. I think he had an outstanding 17-18 season for Manchester City. Uh, I still think he, he can do a job and he's a quality player. He's, he's very rash, but he, he, he's good at other things. He's, he's good in the air. Uh, he's very passionate, um, he'll do a job, you give him a job to do, he'll go try and get that job done to the best of his ability, his heart's in the right place. Um, it's just a time where Manchester City are looking for new blood, fresh blood, young blood to uh, try and uh, move on from the situation that we've got with centre-backs and trying to uh, bring in the fresh blood, young blood, uh, the next upcoming players, which is hence we've brought in someone like Ruben Diaz and Otamendi has left. So yeah, next player, Luke Bolton, he's headed out on loan to Dundee United. I think that'll be a good challenge for him north of the border in Scotland. Got themselves a good little player there, Dundee United. Um, Deli Bashir, who's left Manchester City, that's on a uh, permanent basis. He's joined Sheffield Wednesday, which again, I think is a good move there for Deli Bashir. Um, Manchester City, I felt it was a fairly sure it was an undisclosed fee. I don't think it was too much of a fee that they brought in Deli Bashir. Young quality players, sometimes they just need to leave Manchester City, uh, spread their wings and just see how good they are. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how well Delhi Bashiru will do uh, at Sheffield Wednesday. Um, Ernest uh, Agieri, he's been released by Manchester City, so that's another player on the outs for Manchester City. Jack Harrison, I was a little bit disappointed that we weren't able to get um, a permanent transfer for him. He said he's headed out on loan back to Leeds, and I wanted him on a new contract, and he weren't put on a new contract, and now they've got an option to buy at the end of the summer, so it's just a 12-month extension on what he's already had. Uh, and I'm fairly sure Jack Harrison will be a fantastic uh, young quality football player for Leeds. Um... Maybe we should maybe not put that option to buy there. Instead, uh, try to negotiate with Leeds to get a good price. Because um, Jack Harrison, I'm fairly sure, is will will do very well at Leeds, and I'm fairly sure we could get uh, a good amount. But on the upside, uh, it's it's almost I'm almost certain Leeds will stay up. And if that is the case, I'm almost certain that Jack Harrison will become a permanent transfer uh, to Leeds. Uh, but that will come next summer. Uh, so that's helping him to get game time, knowing full well that there's going to be uh, a long term service there. Now. Lucas Namicha, he's headed out on loan to Anderlecht with Vincent Company. I think that'll be a good move for him. Lucas Namicha uh, had a couple of spells in England, not really uh, scored as many goals, probably what he's looking for. So a move abroad uh, to Belgium does make sense after heading back to Germany on loan last season. And that again didn't really work out. So he's looking for the right loan spell. Uh, maybe that may come at Anderlecht. Uh, David Silver, of course, has left Manchester City. He was a free agent after his contract ended. The legend David Silver, he's headed out to Real Sociedad in La Liga after uh, some uh, shenanigans going on with Lazio. So I think that's a good move back to Spain for David Silva. So wishing him uh, all the best of luck. Gavin Bazunu's headed out on loan to Rochdale. Hoping we get fans back in at some point that I can head down to Scotland as it's not too far away from me uh, to be able to watch the uh, progress of Bazunu. Uh, Paolo Fernandez has left Manchester City to go and join uh, Castellon. In Spain, so the better luck to Paolo Fernandez. He's another player that leaves Manchester City. Yangel Herrera, he's headed out to Granada on loan once again. Had a great loan spell there last season. Goes out on loan there again this season after being linked with a permanent transfer uh, to Valencia as part of that Ferran Torres deal, which ended up uh, obviously Ferran Torres joined Manchester City, but they didn't get Yangel Herrera going the other way. Claudio Bravo, his contract was up. He's left Manchester City. He's headed to Real Batiste with Manuel Pellegrini in La Liga. So the best of luck to Claudio. Claudio Bravo, I think that'll be a good move for him as well. Yeboah uh, Amwakawa, I hope that's how you say his name. He's also headed out to Scotland uh, to Rochdale out on loan, so hopefully see his progress as well. At Scotland, a couple of good moves there to uh, local clubs in the Greater Manchester region. Uh, Pablo Moreno, Manchester City player that we brought in from Juventus, he's headed out to Girona on loan, so I'm looking forward to seeing his progress there. And Aro Muric is also headed out to Girona on loan, so yeah, looking forward to seeing what happens with Moreno and Muric out on 
on loan at Girona and helping them try and get back to La Liga. Now, the Inter for Manchester City, we've brought in Ferran Torres. I think he's shown everyone what he can do in that uh, Carabao Cup game way at Burnley. We got him for a very good price, and so I'm happy with that deal just for the price. We've signed him for around £20 million, a deal that could rise to more than £30 million, but we're signing him for £20 million. I'm certain that given Ferran Torres one or two seasons, uh, he'll be able to show everyone what he's capable of. And so I'm really happy with that signing. I didn't think we were going to get a replacement for Leroy Sane, in particular so soon after Sane had left. But Ferran Torres was brought in and was Manchester City's first signing. So I am happy with that. Uh, Nathan Ake was the next player that we brought in. We signed a couple of players in a couple of days. We brought him in from uh, AFC Bournemouth, obviously, who were being relegated from the Premier League at the end of last season. Uh, and so, uh, Manchester City signed Nathan Ake. We brought him in for £41 million, maybe a little bit more than what I thought City had probably paid for Nathan Ake. However, we got Ferran Torres on such a good deal that I think City just went and got one of their targets in Nathan Ake. And so, we've got a nice cover there for Amer at Laporte. He can also play at left back. Uh, he's quick as well. Uh, and I'm fairly sure that Nathan Ake will be a good squad rotated option for Manchester City so a couple in my opinion of uh, decent solid signings there for Manchester City then of course we had that Koulibaly saga going on forever instead we brought in Ruben Diaz uh, from Benfica we signed him for a club record fee so over 64 million pound uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what Diaz can do um, he's got a great mentality seems like a natural born winner I'm looking forward to seeing more and more of him forming that great partnership I hope with a Merrick Laporte at centre-back. And if he can stay injury-free, free Ruben Diaz, then I'm fairly sure he will be another good, young, quality player. The only thing I'll say about Ruben Diaz is I wish we'd brought him in maybe a month sooner than what we did. Too busy dilly-dallying over Kaladu Koulibaly and getting caught up in this messy saga. We could have been getting our business done nice and early. We could have had Diaz uh, four or five weeks earlier. He could have done that little pre-season session with Manchester City. He could have been ready to go for the first uh, game of the season. Instead, we brought him in uh, after a couple of games, so it might take him a little bit longer to settle in, whereas we could have had him now for a little bit longer than what we could. I think City, a little bit, uh, was quick at the start with Torres and Ake, then went very slow, then sped up again at the end. Didn't really make sense, but there we go. Uh, it's three solid additions, in my opinion. Uh, Pablo Moreno did join Manchester City from Juventus. We then sent him out on loan to Girona. We've already uh, covered Pablo Moreno. And of course, I think it's only fitting that we end the summer 2020 transfer window. We're speaking about the best signing that we made, which was... Scott Carson, Derby County, on loan for another season. The greatest of all time. Present once again at Manchester City. Looking forward to eventually seeing Scott Carson. Maybe... <laughs> Make his debut for Manchester City. Looking forward to that. Just uh, looking at this uh, website that I'm using to get these transfers off. Um, it does say that contracts are expiring. Obviously, Adara Bayo has already left Manchester City, so his contract would have been up. Daniel Arzani's contract is up at the end of um, this season as well, along with Fernandinho and Sergio Aguero. So there's some situations to potentially keep our eyes on throughout the next, uh, what, 10 months or so? Something like that, yeah, 10 months or so goes into August, so we'll see what happens. So there we go, summer 2020 transfer window. Ticked, completed, done, reviewed. All we've got left now is the domestic window where we can continue to speak about and have some updates. And of course, we'll have transfer updates running. Doesn't Transfer window doesn't have to be open for there to be transfer news. City will be getting linked with players. They'll be trying to make things happen. The clubs are always working on transfers, not just during transfer season, but they are working on them behind the scenes as well. Um, I mean, we signed Ilkay Gundogan. We had that ready and rolling from like December through January and February before he was announced for the summer. So yeah, that's how long it takes for deals to get done. City, uh, I would have thought, would be looking to try and get as much uh, business done that they can get done. Missed out possibly on the left back. Some people have been talking about a striker. And if Aguero uh, injuries don't improve by January, I reckon City may well be having a look at a striker. So there we go. That's been the Summer 2020 Transfer Review. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm always interested in what you do have to say with regards to these tra uh, Summer Transfers, um, completed transfers. Anyway, um, Man City's business, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Some solid additions. Could have been worse. Could have been better. Well, it was Lionel Messi. We didn't bring him in. We brought him in. 10 out of 10. Instead, we didn't. And so, left back, um, I can argue a case for a central midfielder. I can argue a case for a striker short as well. I was hoping City would be more ruthless than what they have. Like I said, it's alright. 6 out of 10. 
rate Manchester City's transfers for the 2020 summer transfer window in the comments below. 6 out of 10 for me. Don't forget also, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Aiming at... Well, should we set an aim? Yeah, go on then. 300 likes. That'd be great. 300 likes. Any help towards that would be much appreciated. Don't forget also, subscribe if you're new around here. Press that red button, press the bell and put your push notifications on. Plenty more Manchester City videos to come. Plenty more live streams, transfer updates and JSGC videos for everyone to look forward to. So please help support my channel and subscribe. Aiming for 14,000 subscribers. So any help towards that would be much appreciated. Don't forget also social media links in the description below and sliding across at the bottom of the screen if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter and Instagram email also in the description below too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorship for any videos or any general business inquiries. Thank you for watching everybody. I've been JSGC. I hope everyone is safe and well. I'll see you all again for the next video. Peace.